hot and dusty around the San Antonio area, we are getting a little bit of relief. Let's take a look at that surface map and you can see a meso high across northwestern Louisiana. That's driving an outflow boundary to the west into the area around Tyler College Station and through Houston. Still have plenty of rich tropical air coming up from the Gulf. Dew point temperatures mostly in the 60s, but a few 70s showing up in the eastern U.S. Let's take a quick look out there. Bermuda High lurking offshore. The Bermuda High is actually this huge high pressure area. Let me show that to you on the global scale. There it is, the axis of that high pressure area from basically Bermuda all the way up towards the British Isles. To the south of that, we've got the trade winds blowing in from the east northeast into the Caribbean, coming around and picking up moisture and driving that into the U.S. The colors that you see here, those are the dew point temperatures. The highest dew points above 75 found in the Caribbean, in the western Gulf, and near the Gulf Stream waters. So what we see here, a little piece of that, and that's responsible for the prevailing southerly flow through the eastern U.S. Let's take a look out to the west. Still looking at dew points a little bit elevated around Tucson, 62, 56 at Phoenix, but not really enough convective development to get us widespread thunderstorm activity. Temperatures are rather hot, though. That's a sneak peek at the temperature records, 107 expected today at Tucson. And in the higher elevations, wind slow at near 5,000 feet, expected to come up to 104, tying the record for the date. Also a few records from Kingman up to Grand Junction. So with high temperature dew point spreads in place, that means low relative humidity and high cloud bases, and a lot of these showers will tend to produce virga for the most part. A new cold front coming in through the Pacific Northwest, temperatures in the 60s and 70s, and of course the Canadian prairies, cool air with 50s and 60s this afternoon. That would be very nice to have about now. Let's take a look up in Alaska and the Northwest Territories. Some warm air coming up into the Arctic Ocean region. 64 at Western Victoria Island, 73 at Inuvik, and Alaska itself, unseasonably cool, some cloudy, dreary weather in place in that region. And then coming back out towards the east, not much going on. Quebec has this little occlusion, but there is quite a bit of warm air heading into the Maritimes. Temperatures in the 70s and 80s as far east as New Brunswick. Well, we'll just cut to the chase. Tropical weather, not expecting anything. Typically, we see an increase in tropical cyclone development as we go into August. We hit the max sea surface temperatures around early September. So very likely this is going to change in the next couple of weeks. But for now, not really expecting much of anything. Also, things looking quiet at SPC. All this thunderstorm activity in Texas and the Gulf in a general thunderstorm area. And we're just not really expecting a whole lot of organized convection. So we are firmly in the doldrums. So we'll have a look at those temperatures. There might be some excitement there. For today, as we mentioned, hundreds in the Four Corners area. For tomorrow... On Saturday, some warm air found around the Appalachians. Also, some indications of maybe some downslope flow in eastern Colorado and western Kansas and Nebraska. For Sunday, looks like a heat wave setting up in the northeast, so we're breaking that cycle of very cold weather up there. 97 at Albany, 99 in Massachusetts, and 97 at Allentown, Pennsylvania and 99 at Washington, D.C., so going to be pretty close to that 100-degree mark. 
Also, the panhandle is getting 103, but does look a, a whole lot better there in Texas. For Monday, heading into the last week of July, yep, August is just about here. In fact, it arrives Monday, a week after this date here. So we are warming up in Oklahoma for the 25th, 105 to 107, and some hot weather showing up out there in Oregon. Tuesday, looking very similar to Monday. Hot again in Oklahoma, some heat showing up in Galveston, and continued hot from Northern California into Seattle. And we can see that 93 degree reading there, breaking the record set three years ago. That is going to be significant because not a whole lot of people in Seattle have air conditioning. For Wednesday, continuing that heat in the Pacific Northwest, 95 at Seattle, 105 at Yakima. And for Thursday, not much change. It looks like the heat moves into the deserts of the Pacific Northwest. The rest of the country, at least at this time, looking seasonable. Checking in on Big Rig Steve because we do like looking at the sky. He's out there in northeastern Colorado near Fort Morgan about to pick up a load. What we see here is some high-based cumulus and some alta cumulus. Looks like convective debris. That's going to be it out there in the distance, maybe about 20 or 30 miles away. And the convective tufts right in there. So that's how it looks from his perspective. We can look up some of those cloud forms on the International Cloud Atlas site. This is run by the World Meteorological Organization. If you just go to the search engine and put in Cloud Atlas WMO, you'll be able to get to this page. Now, of course, you can look them up through these menus right here. I'm a little bit more old school. I like to go to these previous editions, and you can download the actual PDFs for these atlases, and those used to run hundreds of dollars. And there it is, the International Cloud Atlas. Now, I used to be a federal observer, and we found it more useful to go by the cloud code. We were more familiar with these numbers here instead of the descriptions. And this is sorted by low, mid, high cloud type and the numbers. And I find it easier to go straight to mid cloud six, and that's what I'm gonna do here. There it is, mid cloud six. That's going to be out cumulus forming from cumulus, rising and spreading out. Now, a sky like this could also be mid-cloud 8, out cumulus castellanus. The sky does look a little bit like this, maybe not as much cloud material, but fairly similar. And here's the perspective from the satellite, Fort Morgan about right here. There's that cloud field out to the east. So this is all residual cloud debris from convection last night or yesterday. Moving on off to the east and the new convection forming on the front range and the bulk of the Rockies further out to the west. I really wish he was crossing the Rockies today. There'd be some cool stuff to look at, but today I guess we just got to settle for whatever's out there. Well, we can turn to the wonderful world of webcams. Fraser, Colorado, showing that cumulus field west of Denver. This is out around Breckenridge, maybe northeast of Aspen. And we see Virga right out there, falling on this mountain range here. And there's that spread out, somewhat stratified cumulus rising and spreading. So really not a whole lot of vertical extent, but I would not be surprised to hear a little bit of thunder. Huh, we go south a little bit to Leadville. That's going to be northwest of Trinidad. And we do have more vertical development, and these are almost certainly producing a little bit of lightning and thunder. We work our way south to Trinidad, Colorado. More of those showers and thunderstorms over the mountains. And if we take it to the southeast and get away from the mountains, 
There's Clayton, New Mexico, at the very northeastern tip of New Mexico. Much drier, a little bit of high-based cumulus up there at about maybe six or 7,000. And that gives way to the very arid, dry air mass in the Texas Panhandle. We summarize using the visible satellite imagery. Clayton, located right there. This is all a dry air mass back behind the dry line. Backtracking to, where was it, Trinidad? Yeah, that was located right here in this mess of convective development. Leadville, a little bit further north. Fraser up here. And then Fort Morgan out there in the barren, arid air. Okay, that was fun. We'll have to do that again sometime. Let's check out the forecast looking at the precipitable water. Monsoon incursion into Arizona, of course, not doing very much because of the high temperature dew point spreads and probably a little bit of capping as well, warm mid-level conditions. Also, a lot of moisture in the Gulf Coast region up to Texas. The rest of the country you can see the effect of all that cold air that's been spilling down into the Midwest. Just run very quickly through the next several days. And there we go. More tropical moisture surging north, more rounds of convective development in Missouri, Arkansas, Kansas. That's it right there. You can see it hits some sort of frontal boundary right in there. Get a little bit of isentropic lift, a little bit of convergence along that frontal boundary, and that helps break out showers and storms, and more of it down there in the southeastern U.S. And I think it's also worth pointing out Arizona. Lots of moisture increasing through the weekend. There's Sunday and then Monday. So it looks like the monsoon activity will be picking up over the next several days in that region. Things are shutting down for Texas, probably because that upper level high is shifting back to the east. That's going to root itself over the southeastern U.S. later in the week. Then another cold front coming south. Dry weather heading into the Great Lakes in the northeast later next week. But it looks like that thunderstorm activity continues from Texas into Alabama and Georgia. Then the next big change, well, that, that's a pretty good high right there moving out of Canada. Look at that dry air coming into Minnesota, Ontario. Precipitable water under half an inch, which is pretty substantial in terms of dryness. Let's take a look at its sounding. That's going to be out around Thunder Bay, Ontario. 40s dew points all the way up to about 7,000 feet, and it gives way to this extremely dry air. Look at those dew points down near minus 25 Celsius at 10,000 feet. Don't see that too often. But that's going to head mostly into the northeast and the Atlantic. Not going to see much of that elsewhere. And looks like maybe another push of cold air coming south for the first week of August. Little hurricane sneaking down there in the Pacific, but looks like the Atlantic is fairly quiet, at least for now. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. I want to thank our Patreon supporters for helping to keep the program going. And if you're not a Patreon supporter and you're not interested in that, at least help spread the word. Let people know that we're here and post on social media. That'll definitely help us out. Anyway, we'll see you back here on Monday for the supporters and Wednesday for everybody else. Stay safe and keep cool, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.